Check the new set video. Which one is that? The video of the new set? Oh, sh**. The new set of TFT? Hell yeah. Hey, everyone. It's Mort. Hey, everyone. I'm Mort. Per I'm, they're, 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 they're. I'm Mort, the gameplay director on TFT. Famous TFT streamer and influencer alike. And I'm here to discuss our next set, providing a few spoilers on traits and units to come, as well as an update on TFT's mechanics. All right, so allow me to introduce our next set, Team Fight Tactics, Monsters Attack. Oh! Okay, if Choga is not in this set, I'm uninstalling. Absurdity ensues as an unlikely group of heroes band together against Titanic Awakened Threat. Can we just pause for a second and appreciate the professionality of Mort Flip here? Yeah, we're talking Apple uh, presentation levels here. Yeah, oh, Mort, keep going. Welcome to Spatulopolis. A city brimming with heroes, threats, and the resulting wreck. Oh! That's a darn. That's a darn typical. We're gonna have Velcos back. Lego. Resulting wreckage, mined debris. Ramus as well. <laughs> is that Ramus? That's Ramus. I know Ramus is coming. Oh, oh, my mains coming in there. Coming patch 1223. Our next set brings a new set of traits more heroic than anything the Convergence has seen. It'll also herald the return of familiar favorites like Mech and Star Guardian but with big twists from their galaxy's counterparts. But before we get into traits, let's briefly discuss our new set's mechanics. And that was Aragon. Still good! And more specifically, augments. First off, <laughs> the big one. Augments are now an evergreen mechanic to TFT. For those who aren't botanists, this means that augments will stick around set after set in addition to new mechanics that come and go with each set. I like that, that's good. Augments are, are leady, I'm, I'm approving. Uh, nice one, good, good choice. Augments provide moments of high stakes decision making that allow you to come up with more strategically creative comps and leads to a fresh experience game after game. They also unlock endless possibilities from a game design perspective. And we've just scratched the surface on what we can do with them. I 100% agree. I think augments are poggy. I think that's one of the reasons the sets is the set is currently really good. I played a lot of this set and I still haven't picked all the augments yet. So it keeps a lot of replay value. Well done. Of course, augments will change set to set and a bit in mid sets to better complement new traits, units, and thematics. But in addition to swapping a portion of our augment roster for our next set, we're also using them in a new way as our set mechanic, one that feels uniquely heroic or villainous in accordance with our theme. In our next set, we're introducing Hero Augments, an entirely new roster of augments. Pog Instead of having blanket effects, Hero Augments buff a specific unit. These augments allow you to make your chosen hero a superhero, or supervillain if that's more your style. We're still superfying these augments at the time <laughs> I'm recording this, but here are a few early samples that are still a work in progress. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Get, get the spoilers ready, get the spoilers, here we go. One of Alistar's hero augments turns his single target knockup Pulverize into an AoE and gives him a bunch of health. His other hero augment, Beef Up, gives his Pulverize ability max health scaling. There will also be hero augments for our villainous threat. Okay. Sounds good. That's, they're also called hero augments, because even bad guys deserve a chance at playing the hero. For instance... Jesus! What is that monstrosity? Is that Zack? What happened to him, dude? Triple war mod. Is Zack the new Cho? For instance, Super Size grants Zack a ton of health, literally 2,000, and immunity to crowd control, while also giving you a Zack. I don't know. I, I want Cho to be big, but it's cool. As you can tell, hero augments are quite powerful. They'll take your chosen unit to the moon. Ooh, when he said chosen unit, I'm just like, oh yeah, don't bring back that. Cause I, you know, in hindsight, I wasn't, that's not what he's saying, I know. But in hindsight, I wasn't a big fan of like looking for that. Uh, which set was that where you looked for like the, the strong chosen unit and you had to roll for like a proper chosen. Yeah, there was something about it that wasn't clean to me. I don't know exactly what. If the devs would ask me, how does it make me feel as a player? Bad, but you know, not saying that would be the case here. These heroes in orbit. Hero augment selections can replace any of the- Oh, let's, let's read a bit. Zami. At the start of combat, Yumi grants her allies 20% bonus attack speed. Gain Yumi. Start of combat, Annie and her allies gain 20 bonus ability power. This is triple if they're below uh, health gain in Annie. At the start of combat, Rel and her allies gain armor and magic assist. Hmm. As long as they're impactful enough, I'm just thinking like most of the augments we see now are like globally affecting the whole team in different ways or a little trait specific. That's true. But, you know, I like seeing things like, you know, Annie and her allies. Yeah, cool. Three augment rounds but they're only offered once. Huh? 
There it is. Cho got gain an additional 90 magic resistance. Starting magic resistance with other allies. Gain a Cho. We're gonna stack a Cho, chat. Go back to. We're gonna stack a Cho. At TFT, we truly believe that anyone can be the hero. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is special. We'll have two hero augments specific to them. All of these different options for souping up your heroes and threats allow for plenty of different super teams to save the day or smash it to smithereens. We're excited to see what players come up with. Now, let's talk gameplay. Oh, baby, here we go. Yasuo's still there. Yasuo's still there. They can't let it go. Before we I get know. into specifics Shh. about units, there are two things that you should know. There won't be any units that take up two slots in your army. Our next set is about building your team of heroes. And last I checked, you can spell team without dragon or colossus. Second, Ramus will, nice. of course, continue to be excluded from TFT. Ha! Huh? TFT is simply a better game without a spiky armadillo. More, uh, what? What, was that the wrong line? More, Ramus is in the set. Who? Who allowed? I never said Ramus could be in freaking Top notch. Top notch acting Mort. So, Give that man an award. Apparently Ramus is making his TFT debut as a threat to my sanity, but also as one of the powerful units in the all new threat trade. Nice. Turns out our next set isn't all Star Guardians and Sunshine. The threat trait is our first trait that's not really a trait. Threats do not benefit from fielding other threats, and they have no other traits. To compensate, these units are more powerful than other units. Next up, we've got the Spatulopolis fan favorite Anima Squad. Okay, as Ramus would say. Okay. The first time an Anima Squad unit gets a takedown during combat, they pause to strike a pose for their fans gaining a stack of fame. Each point of fame gives Anima Squaddies ability power and attack damage that increases at each trait breakpoint. If stacking big numbers like you could with Vega oh, that's and a myth. Okay. is a game. Dude, I was like looking at these three champions. I'm like, oh, they could be any champions, dude. I don't know what those are, but okay, it's a No MF. further than Anima Squad. And better yet, Nasus, whose ability Bonk can be upgraded with a hero augment to give it its stacking mechanic all of its own. Nice. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes and all heroic alignments. <clears throat> Take Underground, for example. Sure, they may not be the most heroic heroes, always scheming to pull off a big heist, but they get the job done. Let's look at who, the, who, who these people are. Is that Ezreal? Sona. Is that that champion that spins around like a Katarina, but is an AD carry? And who's that? Is that Kaiser? No, that's... Oh, that's Kale. Kale. Riven. MF there in the back line. And who do we have here in the front line? Who's the front line here? That's Nasus, and that's Vi? Cool. Yeah, chat, flexing with your league knowledge, huh? Let's listen again. I, I didn't really catch what he was saying. Take Underground, for example. Sure, they may not be the most heroic heroes, always scheming to pull off a big heist, but they get the job done. It just may not be the job you want it done. The Underground are a group of rapscallions that are perpetually attempting a heist. With each player combat, you will move towards completing your heist, getting one progress for a win and two for a loss. Each time you hit seven progress. Oh, <laughs> working process down there. Okay, I see. When you hit seven progress, you and your crew are offered some heist rewards. But it's up to you to take what's offered or to hold out for more powerful rewards. Fortune. Just make sure you can complete your heist before you get carried away to an unfortunate fate. Ah, I can't wait it. to see how far you can take your heist with the underground. There are plenty more super squads to uncover, such as the Steadfast Ox Force that will fight to the bitter end, and then some. This crew is led by gun maestro and sad Back boy, Aphelios, whose custom trait, Arsenal, allows you to swap between weapons to change his ability. We've also got a customizable trait. Admin allows you to configure the cause and effect of your admin program, AKA the trait. With admin, you'll be able to pick a cause, and then you'll be able to pair that cause with an effect. That's cool. For instance, you can combine at the start of combat, with trigger a chance to chop gold to play admin as an econ trait that gives you a gold each round. Controlled Mirage, kinda neat. Admin is an exciting trait for me, not just because it has so many different power levels, but also because it gives players an opportunity to put on their game designer hats when building their comp. Just be careful, if you play admin too long, you may just find yourself getting mort dogged by yourself. Self dogged? Like their galaxy's counterparts, Star Guardians interact with mana, but instead of distributing. Mm. 
just me. Like, literally zero hype for more Star Guardians. Literally just like... Z yeah, sure, the Lux is gonna be in there. Uh... Uh... Cosmetic spoilers! Whoa! <laughs> How can we spend money? This is gonna be uh, sped up a bit. Sorry for being a little bit cynical. Here we go. Having a Star Guardian arena. Is that a new song from KDA? Uh, real talk though, like, I'm, I'm, I'm making jokes here, but like real talk, I don't quite like the finisher in TFT. I don't like him. I don't equip them myself. Uh, I don't like it when I see them happening. I don't like it. I, I think it's just, it, it drops something. It is slow. I don't like it. <laughs> that face. Uh, wait for a new scar, star guardian trace. <laughs> It's not always about the combat, sometimes it's more about the glamour style that can only be obtained with the medical transformation. Lux will be released first, followed by Ari a couple patches later. No way! Both Lux and Ari's in there! I can't believe it! <laughs> We've had a few events- So events also was a thing that I just don't care about, man. I hate coming across as like quite cynical and stuff, but events were that thing where like I logged in, and there was like a bunch of stuff in the client, and I could like do quests or something, and I could like go in and play something... And talk to a cat afterwards, and I was just like, let me just play ranked. <laughs> you know, but it's cool. I mean, fine. To share some spoilers for the future of TFT. Pog. That's right. We are entering the spoiler zone. Here we go. Come on. Some good stuff. Starting with patch 1223 in early December, the next set will have you building your super team and utilizing hero augments to lead your squad to victory. Then we'll usher in the new year with an event that'll come with its own themed game mode for the event's duration. Just after that, in March, we'll see what the future of Spatulopolis holds in our next mid-set. And in the summer of next year, there'll be a brand new set to enjoy as TFT turns four. Wow, four. That's how old I was when I grew my first beard. What? Until next time, <laughs> take it easy. Well done, Mort. Well done, everybody. Well done. <laughs> I don't want to be too cynical, but I am. Um, I think Star Guardians are a snooze fest. I don't care about the cosmetics, and uh, I don't care about alternate game modes too much. Not yet, at least. Maybe they release something that really speaks to me, and I will enjoy it. But it was really cool seeing some new uh, champions. I'm really happy to see Velkos. I'm really happy to see Rambus. I'm so excited for that. I really like that they're taking the augments and keeping that. Especially like the like personalized trait. Uh, it was nice that there's some Fortune in there. TFT has been so steadily improving. I I think that I have uh, great confidence that the next set will be uh, will be great. It's cool that, uh, that they have such a, and I've said this before, they have such a very solid schedule of content that comes out. Just as I've kind of gotten bored with the set and maybe left it for a bit, there's a new set. And just when I've gotten bored with that, there's a mid set. I'm just really happy for that. And I'm just, you know, just wanna, I just want to see more. Spoozy hates anime. <laughs> I used to, want, used to watch a lot of anime when I had time. I love anime. It's just the KDA stuff and the Star Garden stuff. stuff. I'm just like, do it.